times have you heard an adult saying how horrible teenagers are? How many times have you felt pressured by society in order to act a certain way? Hi, I'm Carla, and today I wanted to show you a method that has helped me find myself and has improved my social and academic skills, which is, as I like to call it, the teenager's role model handbook. I just turned 16, and considering I've been studying in my school since I was around one and a half years old, I have basically grown up with most of my friends, and together we have gone through many different experiences and phases while growing older as a big family. With that being said, I can guarantee you that adolescence is by far the best and worst at the same time. After facing all of these issues, I'm confident I have discovered the key to a successful teenager experience, which is being unique and your own person. And that is what I want to focus on during this talk. My method consists on six steps in order to be a role model for future generations. Step number one is valuing yourself. Self-esteem should always be your number one priority for one simple reason. You can't expect others to respect you if you don't value yourself. You are the most important person in your life and you must never forget that. I know for a fact everyone has their own insecurities. I, for example, used to hate my hair. All my friends had this silky, straight hair and I thought they looked so elegant and perfect all the time. And then I saw myself like a crazy person with random hairs running around. I knew it was impossible for me to try to have straight hair like my friends without permanently damaging mine. So instead, I started to take care of my curls and nowadays I love them. I know this is an, an, an easy journey, but by valuing yourself, you'll gain confidence and happiness in your life. And this doesn't only apply to, phys to physical appearance, but also to personality. The goal is to find people with whom you're comfortable with. And if you feel like you have to hide in order to blend with the people around you, you're probably not in the correct place. Step number two is defining your image. Nowadays, social media has a very big impact on how we interact with each other. Depending on how many followers you have or what kind of stuff you post, people judge you and they, plex you, and they fix you in little boxes according to their perception of you. This is a very common action, but we must always remember that everyone is free to post whatever they want on social media and we should try to not let our first appearance define what we think about someone. But since this is basically impossible, my tip is for you to try to make your physical appearance, your clothes, or your style feature your personality, what you like, your hobbies. This may sound superficial, but actually how someone dresses, for example, tends to let you know a lot about a person. This also re relates to what I previously said about confidence, because Especially in social media, we have the stereotypes of how we want to look like. But in the end, each of, one, each of us is different, and we all have something special that no one else has. So instead of trying to look at it like someone else, try to look at it like you. Try to be unique. Step number three is finding a balance. The balance between being cool in the teenage world while still being the nice kid that every adult loves. Some teenagers think that you can do both. And generally, they end up being the rebels or the funny kids in the class who always get in trouble. What I have always thought about these people is that they want to make memories. They want to have stories to tell to the kids when they grew up about what they did in that math class or the prank they made to that teacher. And I get that. But I think we should go out, mess up, start again, enjoy our teenage years, but always remembering to do this with respect thinking about how the other person is going to feel, how that teacher is going to feel after that prank, or the time that someone will have to spend cleaning up your mess. And also keeping in mind your studies, which after all are what's going to take you wherever you want in life. Step number four is respecting our differences. In my opinion, we teenagers have completely lost the ability to decide which things are cool and which aren't, because we tend to mess them up. And please, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm sure all of you have been in a situation where the nice, shy kid who likes to study is made fun of by the supposed to be cool kids to the point of making them feel bad. The repeated act of these events leads to bullying, which has now increased to one out of five people who now see we bullied in 2019, according to the National Bullying Prevention Center from the USA. The chart that you see on the screen shares that the percentages of victims, witnesses, and actual uh, bullies is very high, and the fact that these numbers are so high up is horrifying, 
So what can we do to help reduce this skid stuffing? Well, the first thing you should do is, as soon as detected, you should report it to your teachers or parents or any adult that may help. But sometimes the person that is actually receiving the bullying doesn't realize that it is. So in these cases, I encourage you to talk to that person in private and letting them know that what's happening to them is not their fault and it is not okay. Having support from others really helps people in these situations get the courage to speak up. Step number five is finding your person. In my opinion, the key to surviving teenagerhood is relieving pressure and getting things off your chest. And that is why I recommend having your person, that one individual with whom you can share everything and let everything go. In my case, my escaping method has always been talking to my mom. Every day I get home and I tell her what happened during the day, how I'm feeling, I cry with her when I need to. I know for a fact if I didn't have her, I wouldn't be able to keep going on after every inconvenience. And that is why I always encourage young kids to talk to their parents and let them know what's going on in their life because it has worked for me. But I know I am very lucky to have this relationship with my mom and that most teenagers don't have this type of relationship with their parents. But it doesn't have to be them you have to talk to. It can be a close friend or another family member, but still there are people that feel like they don't have anyone to talk to. But you are not alone. This is why I want to normalize going to a psychologist. I think as a society we have a preconception about what seeing experts mean and we tend to associate it with bigger problems. But in the end, having someone that listens to you and actually knows how to help you can really make a difference because your problems are relevant and you are not alone. So to wrap it up, be a bright teenager, respect others and respect yourself. You're young, intelligent and full of energy, so don't let criticism stop you from being your best version. And in order to be everyone else's role model, you first have to be your own role model. Thanks for listening.